Hi yogis, welcome back to my channel. Today we'll be doing a yoga class for hamstring flexibility. I hope you enjoy it. Let's get started. Let's come to your mat. If you're already there, that's great. Starting with a short meditation. Find any comfortable seat that feels good to you right now. You can use any props as well. If that's how you like to meditate, maybe a pillow under your seat or sitting on a block. Keep the hips elevated. If you're okay on the floor, that's cool too. It'll be a short couple minute meditation, practicing some mindfulness before we go into the physical practice, which I find is always important for a good flexibility practice because a lot of the times when we practice flexibility, we tend to go straight into our mind, like this is hard, this is uncomfortable, I'm not good at this. That usually happens in a flexibility class, even for people that are really flexible. So I always like to start with a really deep meditation, making sure that you find this peacefulness and that you'll be able to really take it with you throughout all the poses we do today and through the rest of your evening or day. So with that little intro, in your seat, hands can be in the center on your legs, wherever feels good to you. Closing the eyes and starting to go inward. Connecting to your breath, the movement of your breath. Feeling it flow from your nose to your pelvic floor and from your pelvic floor up and out through your nose. Being mindful of the differences in every breath you take. Any differences that come about, maybe it's a physical or a mental or an emotional. Every breath should feel slightly different somewhere else. Even if it's just, oh, that breath was a little shorter, this one's a little bit longer. And every difference is just to make you more aware of yourself in this present moment, bringing you really here and now so that your mind doesn't wander. No judgment as well. If you feel your mind starts to wander, just always bring it back to the breath. Bring it back to your body. You can think about your physical body against the floor, the weight of your body, the clothes against your body. It's always a good way to start a meditation, just by tapping into your senses and really feeling everything around you. And then from there, going more inwards and more inwards until you can find that sweet serenity, silence, and peacefulness from within. So let's take a couple more full deep breaths together our mental awareness on our bodies and our breath in the present moment. And like I said before, I'd really like to invite you to try to preserve this energy throughout the whole practice. If you feel your mind wandering, if you feel anything feeling like too much, just return to your breath. Return to your body and see how that affects your posture. See how that affects the pose for you. Let's start to go into some head circles, just slowly moving into our physical practice, releasing any tension from the neck and the shoulders. Connect the movement with a deep breath through the nose. And then change direction. Inhale, reach the hands all the way up, finding lots of space between every vertebra on your spine. Exhale, side bend to the left. 
reach up with that top hand. Keep opening your heart and your armpit to the ceiling. Getting a nice big opening in the body here. Always, even when we're going down to the floor, the direction of the pose is to go down. Our body is always lifting. We're always finding more space within our postures. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, other side. I love a good side bend. It just feels so right to get all that space up in your rib cage. Make sure that your seat is really stable on the floor and that your hips aren't lifting or you'll lose half of the stretch. So make sure you're really grounded in your seat. Inhale back to center. Exhale, right hand to left knee, left hand behind the back. Warming up our upper back, our shoulders. Every inhale you take, find a little bit more length and every exhale, go a little bit deeper into the posture. This is a really important breathing technique that you should use in a flexibility practice and every practice really, except for yin where it's pretty not active and very passive, but in most yoga classes, especially flexibility class, you wanna use your breath as a tool to go deeper into the poses really communicating with your body. Every breath, every deep and slow breath you take tells your brain and your muscles that you're okay and you can go deeper. You'll find plenty of new openings all throughout your body just by using your breath. Inhale back to center. Exhale, other side. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, lower the hands. And let's find a seat on our toes. Just warming up the soles of our feet. We'll go through a gentle body warm up here before we go into more intense flexibility postures. So in our toe stretch, we're stretching out the sole of the foot and our toes, gaining flexibility in our toes. So just take a look for a moment. Make sure that your pinky toe is also out and not like not bent. <laughs> if it feels unbearable and really painful in a sense, obviously you can come out and kind of play with variations, but I would always recommend just to stay. If, know, know that it's really temporary and that your breath will help it become more and more comfortable every time you do it. So the hands can be here on the legs or at heart center. You can close your eyes or find a point on the floor in front of you as your drishti, your one-pointed focus. And see how that helps you really channel the feelings that are coming through you through a pose like this. Where it looks really simple, but you're getting a really deep stretch here to your feet. So it can start to feel intense. Already here, practice on coming back to that meditative energy, that peaceful energy. Take a couple more deep breaths here. slowly come forward. Just give your toes a little tap, letting the circulation flood through your feet again. And then we'll sit on our heels, preparing for ankle stretch. Also here, you could choose to stay here in the center. If it's too much, you can play with any variation that releases the weight on your feet. If it's okay and you have an urge to go a little bit deeper in the flexibility of your ankles, you can start to move the weight back and start lifting the knees. And you can do this without hands or with hands. Just know that if you're using your hands, make sure you're not leaning too far back and really pulling the weight back. It should come more from the legs rather than the back and the hands. If you're lifting the knees, also make sure here that you're not curling in the spine, that you're finding length, your heart is open. And this is really important for most of the hamstring flexibility stretches and poses that we're gonna do today. A lot of the time our back will compensate and it will round in the lumbar spine, in the lower back. 
we, we really want to prevent that by keeping a tall spine, a heart open, shoulders back, and hinging more from the hips, getting our belly to connect with our thighs rather than bringing our head to the, to the fold. So we'll go over that more deeply when we get into those hamstring stretches. But already here, you can kind of feel how the lower back really takes a lot of compensated muscle work when we're working in postures. And slowly come forward and find a tabletop. In our tabletop, the hand will be, hands will be beneath the shoulders, knees beneath the hips, feeling really grounded here, pressing into your fingertips. And let's start circling on the wrist, also warming up and strengthening and working on the flexibility in our wrists. But here we're more focused just on a joint warm up in the wrists, shoulders, and hips. Hips will probably be the most important part of this for the class today since we're working on hamstring flexibility. The speed or the size of your circle can be whatever feels good to you. Just being mindful of what's going on in all your joints here. And then change direction. Connecting your movement to a deep breath through the nose. Let's come back to center. Rebalance yourself to feel real nice and stable. Let's go to some cat cows to warm up the spine. Inhale, look up, drop the belly. Exhale, press against the ground, round the spine up towards the sky. Keep going at your own pace. You can close the eyes if that feels right to you. Just channeling this warm up in our spinal column, the flexibility of our spinal column. Practicing our mindfulness, which means focusing on your breath, focusing on your body, focusing on any sensations you feel within this cat-cow movement. And then we'll sit on our heels, finding a nice wide child's pose. Take a couple deep breaths here just to really reground and groove. Take any variation that suits you in the hands or the legs. Getting a gentle joint stretch in the legs for the hip joints and the knees and the ankles. Really admiring and embracing this gentle moment, this restful moment before we go into our deep practice. Taking a couple more deep breaths here. Feeling your belly against your legs. How it fills up and empties out. And then let's slowly start to come back up to our tabletop. Tuck the toes, lifting the hips, finding our first downward facing dog of our class today. Feel free to add any extra movements here just to warm it up. Already here, the downward facing dog is a great pose for the hamstrings and a lot of the time you'll see where the back compensates here in students where the lumbar spine, the lower back is really curved they're like, oh, I really want to get the legs straight, but then they don't have the flexibility in their hamstrings yet. So always I like to start with a good bent knee, moving the weight back to my feet through my hands, getting a really nice long spine here, turning my glutes and my tailbone up towards the sky, really visualizing my belly connecting with my thighs. And then if I feel extra flexible today, then I'll start to straighten my legs, really maintaining that long spine 
and those tilted hips. So it's really a great hamstring stretch when you do it right. Let's take one more deep breath here in our downward facing dog. And then we'll slowly tiptoe the feet to our hands. Really slowly, step by step, approaching a forward fold. And when you get here, let's come into Pada Hastasana, foot to hand pose. So you're gonna bend the knees as much as you need to so that you can lift the bottom of your foot and place your hand underneath. You're gonna do that on both sides. You want your toes to be touching your wrist joints. And from here, you can choose to try to straighten the legs, or you can just stay here with this belly thigh connection, whatever feels good to you at this moment. Just remember belly to thigh connection, long spine, and slowly tilting the hips up. Focus on that more than focusing on straightening the legs. Move the weight here a little bit more forward into your toes so that you really feel your hips coming above your ankles instead of me being all the way far back. Really slightly moving the weight forward. Don't be afraid. Don't go too much forward as well. You might find that it's scary because you can't fall without your hands. <laughs> so moving really slowly and gently. Always coming back to your breath. We'll be doing a lot of forward folds today. So maintain this nice alignment throughout all of them. I'll be reminding you of the steps as well. You can slowly remove your hands. And then we'll come up to standing. Inhale, the hands come all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart center. And you can drop your hands by your hips for mountain pose, just to let the circulation flow from head to feet. Take a couple deep breaths here. Feeling very grounded on your feet and in your stance. Already here, you should have an active belly, hips aligned. All right, let's go into some Hatha salutations. We'll do just a couple just to get it a little bit more warming up before we go into more um, intense postures. So we're gonna inhale, the hands will come all the way up. Exhale, let's come forward for a forward fold. Feel free to bend your knees if you want to or need to. And then we'll bring the left leg all the way back for a low lunge, drop the knee. Inhale, look up, open your heart, open your shoulders, open your throat. Back to plank. And then we'll drop the knees, the chest in between our hands and the chin to the ground for knees, chest, chin pose or eight limbs pose. The elbows are close to the body, the hips are very high. From here, inhale, slide through the hands and find a cobra pose. Feel free to take any level if you want a full cobra or a baby cobra. May just make sure the shoulders are really far from the ears. Tuck the toes and let's find each other in a downward facing dog. Exhale. Again, remembering to tilt the hips up high so you get a nice long spine, making sure that you're not curving in the lower back. Look forward, let's bring the left leg all the way through our hands. Drop the right knee, inhale, look up, low lunge. Exhale, feet together, forward fold. Inhale, coming all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Other side. Inhale up. Exhale, forward fold. Right leg comes all the way back. Low lunge. Inhale, look up. Back to plank. Exhale, knees, chest, chin. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, down dog. Looking in between your hands, bring the right leg all the way through. Drop the left knee. Inhale, look up. Exhale, forward fold. 
Inhale, coming all the way up to standing. Exhale, hands to heart center. We'll do one more round, both sides. Inhale up. Exhale, forward fold. Left leg comes all the way back, maybe a little bit further back than before to go a little bit deeper into that low lunge. Inhale, look up. Back to plank. Exhale, knees, chest, chin. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Let's stay here for a moment. We'll go into a down dog twist variation just to go a little bit more deeply into our hamstrings. So you're gonna bring your right hand to your outer left calf muscle. And then you're gonna make sure that the weight is still distributed between both legs and your front hand so there's not too much weight in that left hand. Really pushing the weight back towards your feet. From here, you're gonna really use your right hand to twist your body towards that left side, opening your heart beyond your left arm. Deep breaths here. Also here, make sure that your glutes are real high up. No curving in the lumbar spine. And let's switch hands. Right hand to the mat, left hand to outer right calf muscle. Hello. <laughs> Again, coming through beyond that right arm, hips are really high. Hips don't lie. Had to. <laughs> then slowly come forward back to downward facing dog. Exhale. You can exhale through the mouth as well for some extra release. Let's bring the left leg all the way through our hands, maybe a little bit beyond our hands to go a little bit deeper into that low lunge. Inhale, look up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, coming all the way up to standing. Exhale, hands to heart center. Last round. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands down. Right leg comes all the way back, maybe a little bit more. Deep low lunge. Inhale, look up. Back to plank. Exhale, knees, chest, chin. Inhale, cobra. Exhale. Downward facing dog. We're gonna do the twist again. If you don't want to, feel free to stay downward facing dog. Bring the right hand to the outer left calf muscle. Coming through the arm, keep the hips high. One deep breath. And we'll switch hands. Left to outer right. Beautiful. One deep breath. Coming back to center. Exhale, find a deep downward facing dog. Tilt the hips a little bit higher. More belly to thigh connection. Keep visualizing it. See that connection happening. Bring the right foot all the way through your hands. Maybe a little bit more. Inhale, big low lunge. Open the heart. Exhale, forward fold. Make sure the weight in your forward fold is really in your toes and not in your heels so that your hips get really aligned above your feet. Inhale all the way up to standing. Exhale, hands to heart center. Beautiful. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, forward fold. And we'll stay here for a moment. We'll go into an intense active, activated forward fold. What does that mean? Just like we did in the Padastasana, we're gonna bend the knees so that we find this really nice belly, thigh, chest connection here. Everything is glued together. There's no curled back. There's no little space here for anything to come through. And you can bend as much as you need to to find that at whatever level you're at. From here, from wherever you are, you're gonna start to straighten the legs. And it doesn't mean that you have to straighten completely. You're just gonna straighten slightly with your breath, moving slowly. If you feel the connection starts to let loose, then bend the legs again and find that connection. This is gonna take a lot of energy because it's a really deep, isolated hamstring stretch without any lower back compensation. That's why we keep the connection. So 
So we're here. Keep breathing through the nose. Find that meditative energy even when we're in a deep posture. One more deep breath. And then we'll slowly bring the right foot back. And open up to the right side for a wide angle fold. In our wide angle fold, we want our toes to be facing the center, not outwards. And from here, we're slowly gonna walk our hands between our legs and then lower down as much as we can to a wide angle fold. Try to bring your belly through your legs, not your head. We don't wanna find this nice round spot and be like, oh, we're getting through our legs, but it's just our head. We want to feel like our belly is gonna go through the legs. Also important to note here, if you're like, oh, I'm really flexible, you're gonna go into a wide angle, then your head's just gonna hit the floor and you have no space to find that long straight back. So close the angle slightly and then see how much more space you have to go through your legs. Breathing deeply here, feeling this nice hamstring stretch on both legs. Make sure that the weight is in your feet and that you can still lift your toes off the ground. <sighs> Let's take one more deep breath. And then we'll turn back to the front of the mat and find a yogi squat. Sitting on our legs. Take a moment here to rest in those hamstrings. What we're gonna do is we're gonna walk the hands forward, just getting a nice inner hip stretch here. It's okay that the back is curving. Just giving a little rest to our body. You can let the head release. You can rock side to side, just getting this juicy yogi squat stretch in the groin and inner hip region. Let's take one more deep breath here. And then we'll come back up to a forward fold and rise up to standing, inhale, Exhale, hands to heart center. Take one deep breath, letting the circulation flow from head to feet again. And we'll go into some balanced hamstring work. Let's move the weight to our left leg and bring our right leg up. We'll go into extended hand to big toe. So we'll grab the right big toe with our right peace sign fingers. And left hand will come to left hip like this. Make sure that the knee stays close to the body and doesn't fall, fall outwards. Make sure that the sole of the foot is looking towards the bottom of the floor and not to the side. Really keeping the leg in line with your body. Now you can choose to stay here, but we wanna work into that hamstring. So we wanna start to extend the leg forward and that could be at any level. It can be slightly, if you already feel the hamstring working, then stop here. If you can go deeper, then you'll start to extend all the way. Back to my spot. We'll take three deep breaths here in whatever variation you chose. Make sure your spine is tall, your heart is radiating forward, your shoulders are rolled back at whatever variation of the leg you took. Focusing on one point, your drishti. One more deep breath. And now we'll slowly open the foot to the right side. Make sure the chest and the hips are still facing forward, just the leg open. And for extra challenge, you'll look to the left. So it will be like this. Even if the leg is bent, it will just be open to the right or slightly straightened or fully extended. Make sure the leg is really active because if the leg isn't active, it's gonna pull you to the right, right? Yes. Again, you can keep your focus forward or you can look to the left. Let's take one more deep breath. I know your leg is burning, don't worry. Bring the leg back to center and then we'll swing the leg around to the back and prepare for dancer pose. 
Left hand comes up towards the sky. Leaning forward. Now the goal here for our hamstring day is to really kick up that leg as high as we can while still maintaining our balance. Three deep breaths. One more. Inhale, come back up, knee to chest. Exhale, slowly lower down. Yes, feel the leg burn, we love that. Beautiful. Inhale, the hands will come all the way up. Exhale, bring them all the way down, forward fold. Forward fold correctly, belly to thigh engagement. Hips turned up towards the sky, not towards the back of the room. Beautiful. From here, we're gonna bring the left leg back and find pyramid pose. In our pyramid pose, the legs are, the toes are facing forward and really important that the hips are aligned. So if you're by a mirror or someone that can see you, ask them if your hips are in line with each other and that the right hip isn't sinking. It's a really, it's a little game of like kind of moving the hips around. You really want to lift that right hip and drop that left hip. That's the feeling. If it feels uncomfortable or too much, you can slightly bend the front knee, but really try to straighten it as much as you can without fully locking it. You don't want to bring it all the way back. Really slightly micro bend so you're protecting the knee and the ligaments. If you want also, you can widen the stance so it's a bit of a hip distance. That might feel more comfortable as well. So they're not in a perfect line. Whatever feels better for you. Deep breaths here. Every inhale, more length in the spine, almost like a halfway lift. And then every exhale, more belly to thigh. You don't have to drop the head. The head to leg, the head, the head to leg connection is really the last step. More focus on the straight spine, heart open, shoulders rolled back. You'll feel that intense hamstring activation. We'll take a couple more deep breaths here. I know it's a deep one, but it's a good one. <sighs> one more breath. Let's move the weight into our right foot and kick up to find standing split. Now in standing split, I want you first to really kick up as high as you can just to see the difference. And now close your left hip so that you have nice hip alignment and see how high you can get with the leg now. It probably won't be as much, but now we're working from a place of correct alignment. We'll take three deep breaths here. Last breath. Let's slowly drop the left leg back to where it was in pyramid pose. And then we'll swing the right leg back to find a one-legged downward facing dog. Again, we want to really lift as high as we can and then close the right hip and see how high we can get with correct alignment. Now let's circle that right leg just to warm up the hip joint. As we move down to the ground, don't worry, we won't be upside down for much longer. And change direction. Inhale, the leg comes up. Exhale, right leg comes between your hands. Let's drop the left knee. Let's also drop the foot so that we're on the front of the foot and not on the toes. If you need extra cushion for your knee, you can double mat or add a little towel or a blanket. Inhale, let's rise your hands up up toward the sky to find low lunge. You can take any hand variation. I connected my fingers and took the index out. Deep breaths here, and every breath you take, I want you to sink a little bit deeper in between your legs. If your legs are too close, then it's gonna be harder to sink. So you can bring the front leg a little bit more forward or the back leg a little bit more back. Two more deep breaths. And let's drop the hands to the floor. And then we'll move our hands to the left and push our right knee with really, really gentle pressure. You're not really pushing it, but you're just placing your hand on your knee 
and straightening that right hand to find an open lizard pose. You're coming up onto the razor edge of your right foot as well. Really tip that right leg over. Slowly come back to center, put the foot back on the ground, and we'll lower down to a full lizard for three breaths. You can stay on your hands or lower down to your elbows. We're pretty warm now. So use your breath as a tool. If you've never gotten to your elbows before, maybe today will be the day. Breathing deeply. Finding that meditative energy even when we're in a deep stretch like lizard pose. One more deep breath. And then we'll slowly come back up and straighten the leg to find half splits. You can bring it back to the center a little bit. The leg will be straight and flexed intensively so that we can protect the knee. Make sure that you're not locking the knee towards the bottom of the mat, a micro bend here as well. And remembering our notes, inhale, long spine, halfway lift, exhale, belly to thigh connection. Keep the hips up high, make sure they're above the back knee, not falling too close to the foot. Deep breaths, whether your leg is straight or a little bit bent, use your breath as your tool. If you have blocks, now's a good time to bring them. Little we'll place them right next to you like this, by your hands. And then you'll start to move forward or move back to find splits. Now it doesn't have to be a full split, it can be a half split. The blocks will really help you use your energy to control how deeply you'll go into the splits. If you have a full split, you can go into it completely and just use the blocks to really activate your leg muscles. In splits, you wanna feel like your right leg is pushing back and your left leg is pushing forward, so they're moving towards the center. Really actively working here, not just falling with gravity. Deep breaths, no matter what level you're at in the splits. Tall spine, open heart. One more deep breath, wherever you are. And then, whatever way you choose to get to, if you're in the splits, you'll sit on the floor. If you're not on the splits, you'll turn to the left. And you'll find a wide angle seated pose. I'm gonna to turn towards the front so you see me. <laughs> Beautiful. However you got there, you're sitting on your sit bones. Your spine is tall. If you need to close the legs slightly or bend them slightly, that's totally okay. Take whatever variation you need. Feet are flexed and make sure that you feel like you're really externally rotating your inner thighs, so that they're turning outwards and not collapsing inwards. Inhale, the hands will come all the way up. Exhale, let's go towards the right leg for a little forward fold action. Again, you can choose to stay upright with the tall spine, belly to thigh, slowly moving. Act as if you want your belly button to turn towards your right thigh. Inhale, find your length. Exhale, go a little bit deeper, if it feels nice. You can also stay wherever you are, if that's where you are and you wanna stay. <sighs> that's good too. As long as you're breathing, I'm happy. Let's slowly come back up. And then we'll turn back to the front of the mat and close the left leg for Janu Sirsasana. In Janu Sirsasana, the left foot will be against the inner right thigh. And the right foot will be flexed. Make sure the hips are facing forward towards the front of the mat and not outwards towards the side. Inhale, the hands will come all the way up. 
Finding length, lots of length in your spine. Exhale, reach forward as far as you can, and then place your hands down first. Inhale, find more length. Exhale, belly to thigh. You don't have to bring your head to the leg, only if you really want to, but really try to focus on that hamstring and less on the back. Isolate the stretch. Try as much as possible to curve your glutes back and really tuck and find the fold from your hip joint rather than from your spinal column. One more deep breath. And then we'll slowly come back up and we'll bring our right foot over our left to find fire log pose. When we bring the legs on top of each other, they're stacked, shin above shin, heel above knee, knee above heel, and the feet are flexed to protect the knees. It's okay if the leg is a little bit up here. If it's too much, you can straighten the left leg as well. If it's okay, here with me. And then we'll slowly just start to fold forward, bringing a little bit more weight onto the legs, giving our hamstrings a little break, and focusing more on our outer hip joint. Just take a couple deep breaths here before we move to the next side. Also here, you can choose to just kind of relax into it, or you can try to bring your belly closer to your legs and keep the spine long. It's really up to you. We're not focusing on the hamstrings here, so whatever feels good to you. Hmm. Let's slowly come back up. Then we'll unbind our legs and come to the front of the mat to find forward fold again. Yes, we love a good forward fold. Your legs are going to feel like jelly after this. Woo! Let's go deep into that forward fold again, bending the knees as needed, however feels good to you. Tilting the hips up towards the sky. Deep breaths here. See if you can go a little bit deeper than how you started in the class. How is your first forward fold of the day? Is it different than this one? Might be, might not be. Let's just be mindful of our movements and our postures. <sighs> Beautiful. From here, we'll bring the left foot all the way back and then turn towards the left to find a wide angle fold. I'll be with my butt towards you now. I hope that's okay, but I can see you from underneath. Turn the toes inward. Bring the hands back in between the legs, bending the elbows through the legs to find nice length here in the spine. Keep the heart open, roll the shoulders back away from the ears. Keep thinking belly between my legs, belly between the legs, long spine. If it feels good to you, you can start walking the hands through the legs and going a little bit deeper. One more deep breath. And then we'll come back forward, turn back to the front of the mat and find yogi squat again. Sitting in our yogi squat, stretching the hands forward, releasing in the head, getting that inner groin stretch. Feel free to rock side to side if that feels good. And then from here, Coming back up to forward fold, exhale, inhale, come all the way back up, exhale, hands to heart center, take one deep breath, letting the circulation flow from head to feet again. Let's move the weight to our right foot, I'll turn towards you, moving the weight towards our right foot, lifting the left leg up, find your drishti already here, your one pointed focus. From here, grabbing the big toe with your left fingers, right hand to hips, make sure that your spine is tall, heart forward, shoulders back, 
knee in line with the body, sole of the foot facing the ground. If you choose to, start extending either to full straight or half straight whenever you start to feel that hamstring activated on the back of your leg. Take two more deep breaths here. And then we're opening the leg to the left slowly. Always moving slowly when we're working with balance. And then if you choose to, looking towards the right. Again, tall spine, heart forward, shoulders back, leg is active. One more deep breath. And then we'll bring the leg back to center and already flip our grip to the foot to find our dancer prep. Right hand comes by the ear. Slowly exhale as you lean forward and kick your foot into your hand. Keep kicking, keep lifting, really activating the hamstring. Make sure your standing leg isn't locked, but at a little micro bend, really activating those muscles. Keep lifting the leg, stay focused, stay breathing. One more deep breath. And slowly come back up, inhale. Knee to chest, hands to heart center. Exhale, slowly lower the leg. Beautiful. Inhale, hands come all the way up. Exhale, forward fold. From here, we're bringing the right leg back for pyramid pose. Again, making sure you're playing around with the hips so that you find a really correct alignment here. If you have your blocks, you can use them here as well. Any pose where our hands are on the ground and we feel like we need a little bit of help in our flexibility, place them right where you would usually place your hands so that you can actually focus on your legs and less on the forward bend. Toes are facing forward, hips aligned. Inhale, tall spine. Exhale, belly to thighs. Nice. Deep breaths, keep that front leg straight as much as you can, but make sure it's not locked. It's not pushing all the way back. It has a really gentle micro bend. It still looks completely straight, but it's just not locked. At first, it can feel weird to do this because you'll feel like your leg isn't straight if you've been hyperextending for a long time, but this is how we strengthen the muscles and protect our knee ligaments. <sighs> From here, you can stay with the blocks or not. Moving the weight into the left foot, lift the right leg to find standing split. Again, lifting as high as you can just to get a little vision. And then drop the right hip to make sure your hips are aligned and then lift correct with correct alignment. Deep breaths. Keep leaning the weight into your hands and lifting the leg. One more deep breath, you got this. And then we'll bring the right foot back to the ground where it was in pyramid pose. And we're swinging the left leg back for one legged down dog. Again, lifting as high as you can just to get a little feel. And then closing the left hip, dropping the left hip towards the ground to make sure our hips are aligned and lifting from there. One more deep breath, and we're circling the leg, warming up that left hip joint for all those lunges and splits. You know you got to. <laughs> Big circles, and change direction. Let's bring that left foot all the way through our hands. Drop the right knee. Turn the foot to be on the top of the foot. Flip it over. And we're inhaling, the hands come all the way up. If this is too much for your knee as well, you can stay with your blocks. You know, the blocks are your friend. Whenever you feel you don't wanna be on the floor, it's too much for you, grab your blocks. They're great, they're amazing. If you're in low lunge with me, hands up towards the sky. Use your breath to keep sinking the hips. 
Keep sinking through. Deep breaths. One more. And slowly lower down. Open the left knee to a little bit more to the left side. Pressing gently to open it up to find open lizard. Come to the razor's edge of your left foot. Look up towards the sky, turning your heart towards the left side and up. Come back to center with your left hand and let's go fully down for lizard pose. Getting really deep here into the hips. Two more deep breaths. Find that peaceful energy from within. And then we slowly come back up. Bring the leg back to center and straighten and flex for half splits. In our half splits, flexing the foot. Again, you can grab your blocks if you want to or need to. Make sure the foot is really, really flexed. You want to protect your knee. If it's not, it's going to go straight and let the knee fall through. We don't want that to happen. Again, inhale length. Exhale, belly and thigh. Keep going with it. Even if your belly and thigh are connected, you can always move it more forward. The goal with our forward fold is eventually to bring our elbows to our toes to go so deeply connected with our whole upper body to our whole lower body. And from here, we're moving forward to splits with or without blocks, up to you. Slowly moving, connecting to your breath, communicating with your body. Is this okay? Should I move back a little bit? Your body will speak to you. Your body will say, oh, this kind of hurts, but it's okay. You can stay here. Or it'll say, no, no, no. Go back a bit. So really communicate with your breath, listening to these little signals your body gives. Slowly either moving the leg forward or the leg back. Deep breaths, keep the left foot flexed the whole time. Keep trying to bring that left leg, the back leg, or sorry, the right leg forward, and the left leg back, so they're always moving with their energy towards the center. Feeling this deep hamstring stretch in the left leg, make sure you're protecting the knee with that flex. One more deep breath. You got this. We're almost done. And then you'll sit and turn towards the right for our straddle seated fold. Beautiful work, so proud of you guys. Make sure you're sitting on your sit bones that your lower back isn't curved. If it is, close your angle or bend your knees. If you're okay, flex the feet, externally rotate the thighs. Inhale, hands come all the way up. Exhale, we're going to forward fold towards the left knee. When we do that, try to get into a little twist here that your belly button is looking towards the left thigh. And then slowly move with your breath, with your posture, connecting to the pose. Two more deep breaths. And slowly come back up. And then we'll bring our right leg to our left. For Janu Sirsasana, head to knee pose. We're connecting the inner foot to the inner left thigh. Make sure the hips are facing forward. So really get a nice little twist here in the hip so that they're not open. Keeping that flex in the left foot. Inhale, the hands come all the way up, finding that beautiful length that we love. Exhale, forward fold. Again, try to maintain that long spine as much as you can before you fold completely with the head and the upper back. Really focus on that lower back and belly first in all folds.
Use your breath as a tool. Every inhale, more length. Every exhale, go a little bit deeper. Your body will open. It will allow for this to happen. As long as you're breathing deeply and slowly. One more deep breath. Inhale, slowly come back up. And then we'll bring the left leg on top of the right for our fire log pose. Legs on top of each other, flexing the feet to protect the knees. Tall spine. And then we'll slowly fold forward if that feels comfortable, comfortable for you. If it's already deep, you can stay up and just close your eyes. If you're okay, you're putting a little bit of weight just to go a little bit deeper into those hip joints. Again, you can choose to do this with a straight spine or with a little bit of a curve and just kind of rest in the pose. Both are okay with me. Love a good external hip stretch. It just feels so good. Take one more deep breath. And then we'll slowly come back up. Unbind the legs and let's lay onto our back. Couple more poses before Shavasana. Some last hamstring activation. You can do this with a bent left leg or a straight left leg, whatever you want. We'll go into reclined extended hand to big toe, just like we did in standing. So you'll straighten the right leg, and you can either grab it with your hands, grab the big toe, and bring your left hand to your hip. You can hold the calf muscle, you can hold the thigh, whatever feels called to you at the end of the class. You worked hard, so I'll give you lots of variations. If your left leg is straight, make sure to flex the foot. If it's bent, that's okay. And we'll just take a couple deep breaths here. Every inhale, find more length. Every exhale, bring the foot a little bit closer to you. If you have a strap, you can also use that. Make sure your shoulders are rolled back and relaxed on the ground, as well as your neck. Make sure there's no stress in this region. and You're not kind of like pulling with all your might. You want to be pulling from a place of relaxation in a sense, even though we're getting a pretty good deep stretch here. It's more relaxed than the standing version. One more deep breath. And then we'll open the right foot to the right side with the right hand and place the left hand on your left hip to make sure that that left hip isn't lifting. If your leg is bent, it's okay if the knee falls towards the left to find more balance. When the knee, when the leg falls to the right side, make sure it's not just falling, but that it's actively lifting towards the right shoulder. You can use your hand to help. Stay flexed in the right foot. You can also look to the left if you want. And then slowly come back to center and we'll bring the leg all the way to the left side. You can choose to do this with a straight leg to get that extra hamstring stretch. Or if you're ready to cool down already, you can bend the leg and just come into a deep recline twist. Up to you. I'll go into a hamstring. If you're in the hamstring, the, left, the right foot is flexed. You're looking towards the right side. The leg is straight and moving closer towards you. If it's bent, you can just be relaxed in your bent leg deep twist. One more deep breath. And slowly come back to center. Give the leg a little pull towards you and lift the head towards the leg as much as you can for one last push. Yes, get it. 
and then let's slowly change legs. Again, you can choose what to do with that right leg that's on the floor, either bent or straight and flexed. Grabbing the left leg wherever you choose to, you can even start a bit lower, make sure that the back is relaxed, your shoulders are relaxed, and then maybe slowly walking up the leg with your breath. Neck is relaxed. And we'll slowly open the left leg to the left. Right hand comes to right hip, making sure that that hip doesn't lift. And pulling the foot towards your left shoulder. Bring the leg back to center. And then switch hands on the foot if you're going into straight leg twisting. You're letting the left foot fall to the right side. You're looking towards the left. If you're with that added hamstring stretch, the leg is flexed. If you're not, the leg is bent and you're in a more restorative deep uh, recline twist. One more deep breath. Slowly come back to center. Give that leg an extra pull towards the head. Head to knee. Yes. And then release completely. You can give your knees a nice big hug for wind release pose before we go into Shavasana. Full body flexion, letting those hamstrings take a little break. Everything is hugging inwards. Hmm. And then release completely for Shavasana. Beautiful work. So proud of you. Open your legs as wide as the mat or maybe wider, hands by your hips, making sure your body is nice and open, ready to give and receive to the universe in this beautiful Shavasana. Again, returning to our mindfulness practice as we did in the beginning and throughout our practice today. Focusing on your body physically, how does it feel, any sensations you feel in your muscles, in your joints, with your body against the ground beneath you. And connecting to your breath, and the movement of your breath, the journey of your breath through your body. Breathing deeply, feeling your belly rise and fall. And how that helps you feel more calm and release stress from the body. Just like in our class today, when we release any tension or stress from our tight muscles, we also release it in that tense and stressful energy from our mental and emotional being. Our body and our mind work together. When one gets released, so might the other. Let's take a couple more deep breaths here. Filling up the body with new air and releasing completely, feeling your belly hit the ground beneath you at the end of that exhale. Coming back into our physical bodies. You can start to tingle and wiggle the fingers and the toes. And then use your hands and your feet to help you come up to a comfortable seat any comfortable seat that suits you. Feeling your circulation flow from your head to your feet again. Keeping the eyes closed, preserving the Shavasana energy for a little bit more. Taking a couple deep breaths, 
Feeling this beautiful posture, heart open, shoulders back, and extra open hips and hamstrings. Hands to heart center. Thank you, namaste. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. I really hope you enjoyed the hamstring flexibility class. And if you did, please let me know down in the comments, like the video, subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much again. Bye.